Hi, the beautiful world of YouTube. So today I'm going to be starting a new chapter and a new thing that I'm going to be doing for a couple of weeks. Um, there will be like, I think there's 30 chapters, so maybe like 30 videos of this. I'm going to do one video, one chapter. Um, I am like five or six chapters in, so I'm going to record all of those chapters tonight chapters tonight and um so i'm gonna be wearing the same thing i'm gonna be looking the same don't think i wore this for days and this is what i look like for days i just i'm gonna record all of the chapters i've already done in one sitting tonight and then i'm gonna do the rest of the chapters with you guys um so this book that i'm gonna be starting is grieving the child i never knew um by kate Oneberg. i want to say that's how you say it i don't know but i'll show you the name right here and um, at the bottom of it, it says a devotional for comfort in the, lo the loss of your unborn or newly born child. So before I get into this video, I do want to tell you guys a little bit about my story and why I'm actually um, doing this devotion and reading the book. And it has already brought a lot of healing to me. So um, I was married three years ago. I got married right after I turned 18. <laughs> and I... Um, and the first year of marriage, we had three miscarriages together. I do believe my first one would have been a girl. Her due date was September 17th. And um, so that was my first loss. And then um, two months later, I got pregnant again. And then seven months later, I got pregnant again. So all within a span of a year, I lost three children. Um, I kind of lost my mind. I went into a very, very bad depression. Um, I went through a lot of things. I tried to commit suicide. Um, and then fast forward four years later, almost five years later, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, still hurts a lot. Um, right now I'm battling some depression with it and some sadness as I am, I've been divorced and I am been engaged for about seven months to my fiance, wonderful man. Um, we bought a home together and we're at a point in our lives where you're supposed to start having babies and creating that family together and unfortunately that just maybe isn't in our plans so um, I have things coming up as surgery and whatnot to hopefully be able to correct some of that but um, this book has brought a lot of healing to me already and I kind of went through YouTube to see if anybody else had done this because I didn't want to copy anybody and they actually have it where they have like read the chapters aloud and went through it, it has little questionnaires. Um, and I wanna do that with you guys. So you're probably not gonna see a lot of the actual book on the camera. I'm gonna keep it down. I'm gonna be looking down a lot. Um, but I want to read to you the chapters and go over the questions and tell you what I put in there. So without further ado, let's get started. So when you open the book, about three pages in is just like a little note she puts to her babies. And it says, to my children I never knew, but who, but who have left an internal imprint on my life, Zachary, John, Samuel, Luke, and Matthew, and to yours. And then a couple more pages is um, just kind of like what chapter is what in here. And then that's just eight ways to use the book. It just has a page on different things you can use the book for and I just want to get into the actual book I don't want to do the introductions or anything so part one and I am going to do um, I'm going to use parts instead of chapters I know I was saying chapters earlier but I'm going to start saying parts since this is what the book says it says hiding hiding to put out of sight to con conceal for shelter or protection to keep secret. And that's the definition of it. Sorry, I'm just making sure I'm on the first one. I was actually on the wrong page. She doesn't call it parts, she calls it devotion one. Okay, I'm lying, it's parts and devotion. Ha, joke's on you. I was on the right page. Rock of ages, cleft for me, lift me and hide me in thee. A.M. Top lady. Top lady. Top lady. Top lady. I don't know. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depth of this earth, 
your eyes saw my unfor unformed body. All the days oriented from me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Psalms 139, 15 through 16. So I do want to pause. Um, one thing I didn't mention is this book is religious based. Um, but in my, I am religious. Uh, but in my opinion, this book is for anybody. Whether you're religious or atheist or Muslim or whatever you are, whatever religion you practice, um, this book is definitely for you. Like I said, I've already got a lot of healing from it. So I'm going to continue. Hide and seek. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, where are you? Genesis 3, 8 through 9. Hide and seek is one of my favorite childhood games. I enjoy hiding. It's always a challenge to remain silent and still when they seek and find mission is underway. When footsteps trade or tread close by and the person yells, where are you? I have to make a choice. I will <clears throat> remain hiding or I will expose myself and be found. That's the situation Adam and Eve found themselves in after they disobeyed God and were hiding in the garden. I can only imagine the anguish they, have, they must have felt. When they realized the, the death was part of their lives now, they would experience death physically through the aging process, emotionally through the guilt and shame, and socially by blaming each other, and spiritually by alienating, <laughs> alienating them slaves from God because of sin. Picture this, brave couples mourning their lives, the only once they, the only once they had peering out from the bushes, afraid they would be discovered and forced to face the truth. I'm going to pause it for just a second. I am sorry if I mess up. I'm really nervous. Um, I feel like out of breath. And I'm really, really nervous to be doing this book. Um, be reading it. And I'm I'm stumbling over my words a little bit. This is something so near and dear to my heart. I think I have written things in here that I have not even told my own fiance. And I'm about to share them with you. Which is crazy because there's a lot of pain and hurt in this book that I've written down. So I'm sorry I'm stumbling on my words and I'm so nervous to do this and just open myself up to you guys. So excuse me for my reading issues right now. Like Adam and Eve, you two have experienced a great loss. Whether the miscarriage, whether through miscarriage, stillbirth, tubal pregnancy or infant death, your loss may cause you to hide physically, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. Sometimes the pain is too intense that you may want to disconnect from others and from God. You look for, <clears throat> for ways to hide your hurt. Your camo you camouflage your questions, fears, and disappointments so well that you may think others do not notice. But how long can you stash your silent heartache? Is hiding really healthy or does it hold you back from a, health, a healing journey? Sooner or later, someone will come to find you. Do you find yourself hiding in the bushes like Adam and Eve? The Lord is walking through the garden, calling your name. How will you respond? Will you remain in hiding or will you expose your real feelings about your loss and, be, and begin the journey through your grief? So that is the end of the first chapter. Um, and then it actually goes into the questionnaire, like devotions. But it does have a little something she prayed um, during her journey because this woman has lost many of children herself God the loss of my children is so agonizing I feel I feel as I'm playing hide and seek with my pain I've camouflaged my questions fears and hurts so others will not notice and will pass me by how long can I hide my heartache will you be my truth today reveal the specific areas of my life physically emotionally socially and spiritually where I need healing Show me how to move forward in my grief journey. Amen. So steps towards healing. I'm going to show you this page. So it's just got questions that you fill out. And these are really personal. But I do, um, I want to be very honest in this book and with you guys. So I'm going to put what I said. Um, and like I said, um, a couple chapters, I'm a couple chapters in. 
and that is when I'm going to start actually writing in. Um, actually, I am 12 chapters in already, which is 12 days. So I'm going to start here. And once we get to chapter 12 together, I will be doing this with you guys. How have you been hiding the pain of your loss? So I put pertaining to be happy for new moms. So for me, it is very, very hard to see other people get pregnant and enjoy that. And I'm four years in. Um, when my sister got pregnant the most recent time, I was overfilled with joy for her. Um, it's become a little bit easier, but there are still some people in this world um, that I have a hard time seeing get pregnant. Um, and then I said not talking about it often. So I don't think I talk about it often. I think I um, hide it more than anything. I always, when someone asks if I have kids, I say none living. Um, if they press, I press that. I, I say that I've had three miscarriages. Um, but I, I think I avoid talking about it. I avoid bringing it up because that hurts really bad. How have you felt disconnected? <laughs> disconnected physically, emotionally, socially, or spiritually? Um, I said a piece of me is missing. Um, I feel as if when my, my baby passed away in me that um, they took a piece with me that will no longer be on this earth that um, a piece went to heaven and that piece will never be fulfilled again. Um, and I said I cannot do what a woman is supposed to do. So I feel as if for me a woman is to get pregnant and have a baby and we're so much more than that like woman empowerment we are so much more than that but that is one thing that sets us apart from men completely and utterly and i feel as if that's something i just can't do um number three imagine someone asking you where are you in your grief how would you respond today how would you like to respond in a year from now and I put um, where I am in my grief. I'm four years in and still have a very deep hurt in me and have a hard time trusting God. And um, like right now in the past like two weeks, I've been really battling um, wanting a baby. Um, I feel like my ovaries are crying. Give me a child. And so that is bringing up a lot of past hurts. So I feel like I'm dealing with that a lot. And also um, that brings up some trust with God because I do feel like God played a big role in my babies. And um, for a while I questioned what I had done wrong for God to do that to me. Um, and then where I want to be in a year from now is I want to trust again. I want to be able to trust God again and trust that one day my body is going to do what my body's supposed to do. Um, four. Are you ready now to take a few steps forward in grieving your child? If so, fill in the date below and say this out loud. So I started this on 427. Today, 42719, I am choosing not to hide my grief, but to step forward in the journey to grieve my child. So I actually I did start this quite a long time ago. And I um I stopped because I wanted to be able to do this video with you guys. And it just took me a while to be able to do that. So that is the end of the first part, the first chapter, I guess you want to say, in the first devotion. Um, it took a lot to share that with you guys. And I'm sorry for stumbling and being nervous. And I'm very just like out of breath because I shared some very intimate things with you guys. And I hope through this someone gets some healing and um, that you can remember that it's okay to grieve. Even if you never met the baby, never met your child, it is completely and totally okay to grieve. And I'm doing it with you. So thank you guys for watching.